So here's a cool effect that doesn't take much know-how and or much sort of technical technical ability to be able to pull off. Very simple, like a flickering sort of old school projector light. You know, like one of those one of those old like slide projectors for projecting an image onto a surface. Pretty cool, pretty easy. And all we're going to need, well, since we're dealing with light, is to make some dark. So we'll just grab the floor there and duplicate it to make a ceiling. And we're also going to need an image. And I've used this picture of a cute little tiger, which I've overlaid over the top of like an old slide frame that I used for a different project. And if you use an adjustment layer and put it over the top of the slide, you can adjust how much light is going to hit the, hit the image behind it. And I've just set it to multiply over the top of the little tiger. I'll put this image, this, uh, this frame image, in a link in the description so that you have a, a good starting point. And I chose the, the little tiger because it's got some colors, so we'll be able to see very clearly how the effect works. And that's all we need. So we'll jump back into Unreal. And first things first, we'll make ourselves our material, which I will just call Projector Light. We'll open it up. First thing is to make sure that we set it in the material domain to a light function. And we'll get a texture. Did I say it was a lion? It's a tiger. It's a tiger cub. Cute little tiger cub. And we're making a, a flickering light, which means we're going to be playing around with a sine wave, which looks like this. It's just an oscillating wave that we can use to make something, you know, swing back and forth or up and down. Or make a light brighter and darker. We can speed it up, slow it down. Lots of different uses for a sine wave. So to start with, we'll just grab a time node. And I'll just plug in my own values here. But you will obviously have to dial in your own values for whatever sort of project you're working on. For whatever effects you want the final product to look. So we'll grab our sine wave, just like that. Next slide and add, then clamp. And this clamp at the end is going to control the maximum values of the, the amount of maximum bright and maximum dark it's going to be. I think a good value for this is 0 0.6 to 0 0.9. Because we don't want maximum dark and we don't want maximum bright. Next thing, hold in three to bring up a vector. Right click to convert to parameter. We're gonna call this color. This is because we're going to instance this material for the, the chromatic aberration effect for the end. So we'll feed this through a multiply node. We'll set it white, first of all, so that we can at least see it in the material. And then feed the results into another multiply, which we'll plug into the emissive color. And that's it, that's our, that's our material. And you can see here the, the little tiger's big mug flickering there. So a pretty simple graph at the end. This is just for the flicker, this bit that I've got highlighted. This bit's for the picture. And we multiply them together to get our final result. So we'll save that and move forward. First off, we'll just create a material instance. We want three instances. Instance one, instance two, and instance three. There it is. Let's open them up, activate color. And so we want red, green, and blue. So for red, we'll just set the green and the blue values to zero. Get a proper red, red image. Save that. We'll open up instance two. Move it up so you can see that I double clicked it. And do similar. So for green, we want red and blue to be set to zero. Save that. And obviously for blue, for some reason it opened in a maximize window. We'll activate color and make sure that red and green are both set to zero. And we'll close that down. We can close that too. So there's our, our three instances, and these are going to be used in our blueprint. Speaking of, let's start with that. So we want a new blueprint actor. This one we will call projector. And we'll open that straight up. And first thing, I'm going to use an arrow so that it's just easy to see which way is forward when we're when we're in the in the editor. Next, uh, we want spotlights. So we want a spotlight and we're going to duplicate this twice. I'm just going to name them very simply R, E, and B. 
And starting with R, we'll start with a light color and do similar like we did for the material instance. Set green and blue to zero for red. Red and blue to zero for green. And red and green to zero for blue. And then one at a time, we'll come down here to the light function and we'll make sure that we assign the correct light function to each light. So the red one for the red light, the green one for the green light, and the blue one for the blue light. And that's done. And now to test out, to make sure that this is working fine, we'll drop this into the scene, play it around. And we should be able to see our picture. Might have to set the intensity up quite a bit higher. Oh yeah, so it's there, it's just very, very dim. And it's also sideways. If you see that it's coming up like sideways like this, don't just rotate the blueprint in the world. Uh, come back into the blueprint and rotate them all in here. Otherwise our chromatic effect won't work correctly. So rotate them around clockwise, double check, and our little little tiger is upright. In fact, we could probably uh, get a better look at him. Wow, the intensity really needs to be high. There he is. <laughs> There's our cute little tiger. Okay, now we're ready to build our blueprint out. Now instead of the event graph here, because we want to be playing with uh, some of these values in the editor with the blueprint placed, we're going to go to the construction script. And we need variables. So let's go for intensity. We want it to be a float. And we'll just compile that so that it, it reads. And we'll duplicate. Call this one inner cone. Duplicate again. This will be our outer cone. Duplicate again for attenuation and duplicate one more for chroma. Now this next part is very, very simple. All we need to do is come off this construction script and find those nodes that we just, uh, we just made. Like set intensity. It will automatically plug in some or, or just one of our, of our lights, but we'll get the other two, place them here and plug them all into the target. So that affects all of them. Grab our intensity variable and put that into our value. And that's all it is. Now we're going to repeat this for the other, the other variables that we've made, like the outer cone angle. We'll plug into our lights, grab our outer cone, do the same for our inner cone angle. Plug them in too. Next is attenuation. Set attenuation radius. Let's bring those over so I can see them. Just like that. It's a little bit spaghetti. You can duplicate these three and plug them each into each of these nodes individually if you're into that kind of thing. I'll put our attenuation there. And for the chroma, the chroma is slightly different. We'll need to grab our, our red and our blue. We'll duplicate those because the green is going to be the middle value, the central, central light. And the red and the blue are going to move either side. And for that one, we'll need set relative location. Set, set relative location. And I want you to right click the vector for new location and hit split struct spin split struct pin <laughs> which will separate the vector into three float values one for x one for y one for z we'll put our so we'll need one of these for each of our lights so we'll duplicate that now and get our blue over here we'll get our chroma variable and double check in the viewport which direction going to be moving so pay attention over here on the right to the location and 
see which way which way they move. So it's y in the minus for our red light, and therefore y in the positive for our blue. So if we go back to our construction script, we'll put our chroma value just into the y for the blue light, but for the red light, we need to feed it through a multiply, a float multiplied by float, and set our second value to negative one. There's a positive multiplied by a negative equals a negative, or negative one in this case. And just plug the result of the multiply into the new location y. And that's it, that's it for our blueprint. And because we've used the construction script here and not you know, anything else, we can affect these variables in the editor as long as these, these little eyes on the right hand side of the variables are open, therefore making them public, we can see them in the details tab in our main editor window. Okay, so we've lost our image. That's because all the values are set to zero at the moment. So we'll crank this up. We need attenuation up to that line, hit the wall. Let's come back here, give it some distance. A lot of distance. There we go. There's our inner cone coming up. There's our outer cone around it. And we'll bump this intensity way up. And we can see our little line. A little tiger. I keep calling him a lion. I don't know why. It's clearly a tiger. There it is. And for my final trick, the chroma values. So this, this gets you as far as putting an image on a wall, like the projector effect. But for the added coolness of the chroma, let's grab that and drag it. I'll have to get inside here so that we can see. And you can see that, that distortion, the color separation there, which when they all add up, when the value is zero, makes the final image. But as we bring, as we bring this value up, see the colors shift and separate very very cool very very easy effect to pull off quite effective although it does cost a little bit of overhead because this is a these are three dynamic lights and you know running off a running off a material plus the calculation of the flicker so if you're going to use this effect use it sparingly but look how cool it is look how nice that looks make it a little bit dimmer You can just imagine the applications for this type of thing. I chose the tiger because it's it's sort of quite a colorful image, so we can see very clearly how the chroma affects the, the final final display. But yeah, that's the, the flickering projector effect. I hope this helps someone, and I will see you next time.